Hello. Welcome to Muster Public Library, to Julie's Kitchen Table, which is our homeschool event here at the library. This year we've been working on some biographies, juvenile biographies, and this will be our last one for this school year. Um, we're finishing up with Georgia O'Keeffe, as you can see the books here. These are a couple from our collection in the children's department. And specifically, we're gonna talk about Georgia in Hawaii. Now when we hear about Georgia O'Keeffe, we usually think of her in New York or uh, New Mexico, which is where she lived the bigger part of her life. But while she was there, she was commissioned to do some artwork for a pineapple company called the Hawaiian Pineapple Company in Hawaii. And that one actually turned into Dole Pineapple Company. So she was going to do some artwork for their ads and um, so she took a trip to Hawaii, and that's what we're gonna learn about. But let's talk a little bit about her first. She was born a Midwest girl, just like you and I. Born in Wisconsin in Sun Prairie in 1887, and I'm gonna use my little sheet here, and she lived to be almost 100 years old. So she died about six or seven months before her 100th birthday. Um, she was the second of seven children, and she grew up on a farm, but she always knew that she wanted to be an artist. So when she graduated from high school, she went to New York and um, she studied, actually she went to Chicago and studied there at the Art Institute, Institute. Then she went to New York and studied there at the Art Schools League in New York. So in the 20s, people recognized her art because of what she was doing in New York City. She was doing buildings and, and things in the city um, about 20 years later, she decided to take a trip to the Southwest, specifically New Mexico, and fell in love with everything there, what it looked like, the people, the Native Americans, the Spanish speakers there. Um, so she ended up making her home there in about 1949. And that's where she was for the remainder of her life. So from there, we're going to talk about her trip to Hawaii, and I'm going to read this book here, Georgia in Hawaii, and after that we'll talk about a few things, um, something that we have that's special in Muscatine at the uh, Muscatine Art Center, and a few other things, and then we'll talk, talk about your little kit, what you're going to take home this week, and we're going to look at what we can do with that kit, okay? So let's open up the book. There's a great picture of Georgia. I love the end pages of this one. Let's see if I can get it under the camera. Maybe. There we go. So the end pages here are all of the beautiful flowers that Georgia saw in Hawaii. Some of them I think you're probably familiar with, like the hibiscus, we have those here. Plumaria we have here, philodendrons we have here, but lots of them we don't. All right, Georgia in Hawaii by Amy Noveski and illustrated by Yui Morales. After five days at sea, Georgia O'Keeffe arrived on a green island in the middle of the Pacific. She was greeted with silver coins and lays of plumaria, wild ginger, and crown flower. Aloha, Georgia. It was February 1939, and the Hawaiian, the Hawaiian Pineapple Company had invited the famous artist to tour Hawaii. They wanted her to create two paintings to promote the delights of pineapple juice. Georgia visited the pineapple field soon after she after her arrival on the land of Oahu. She found the sharp and silvery fruit quite strange and beautiful. She wanted to live nearby so she could study it up close, but the pineapple company would not let her. Only workers live near the fields, they said. Georgia protested that she was a worker too and could live wherever she wanted to. The company refused to allow it. Instead, they presented her with a pineapple. Georgia was disgusted. She did not want to paint the fruit now that it had been picked. 
and she would not let anyone tell her what to paint. Despite the pineapple trouble, Georgia started her tour. She flew to the island of Maui. There she stayed on an old sugar plantation at the edge of a rainforest and carried a paper umbrella when it rained. In a borrowed banana wagon, she drove the tightly winding mountain roads. Georgia went where she wanted, when she wanted. And Georgia painted. Georgia painted waterfalls, green pleated mountains, lava hardened into fantastic shapes, and delicate feathered fish hooks that she collected like shells. And Georgia painted the blue, blue sea. Next, she traveled by steamer to the big island of Hawaii, where she admired volcanoes that rose thousands of feet into the sky. She walked on black sand beaches, reached only by boat, and studied a rare piece of red coral. She met the local cat cattle ranchers, or Paniolo. Paniolo. These Hawaiian cowboys showed her their gardens. And Georgia painted flowers, bird of paradise, and philodendron, long, foot-long heliconia, and fragrant plumaria, torch ginger and silver cup, lotus and hibiscus. She painted Anana Huhanoa, I think is how they pronounce it, Nana Haunua, that she'd picked by the side of the road. It reminded Georgia of her favorite desert flower, the jimson weed. In Kauai, her last stop, Georgia visited with lo local artists. She stayed at the seaside home of a former Hawaiian queen near Koloa, a small mill town surrounded by fields of wild sugar cane. Soon she was used to the scent of burning sugar in the air. Georgia was even starting to look like an island girl. But too soon, Georgia's Hawaiian tour was over. It was now April and time for her to return home. From the deck of an elegant ocean liner, Georgia watched the green islands grow smaller and smaller until it was just her and the sea and the sky. Georgia had created nearly 20 paintings of Hawaii, but she had not painted a pineapple. Instead, she gave the Hawaiian Pineapple Company paintings of a halconia flower and a papaya tree. They were not happy. They wanted pineapple. Georgia was not happy either. She was not going to be told what to paint. But then she thought about Hawaii and all that it had given her. She decided to give the company what they wanted. 36 hours later, a Hawaiian pineapple arrived at Georgia's penthouse in New York City. Though Georgia didn't need it, when she closed her eyes, she could still see Hawaii and its sharp, beautiful fruit. And Georgia painted a pineapple. And there she is with her painting. All right. So there's a little bit about Georgia and her pineapple. Now what she ended up painting, actually, we have some pictures, was a pineapple plant. So the pineapple is actually like a little bud in the middle of the plant and there's all these spiky leaves that come off of it. And this is actually the ad that Dole used with that pineapple painting that she did, her very last painting. She did do over 20 paintings and I think there are several that were unfinished maybe four or five that she had started sketches and or paintings that she didn't finish. Um, but we're gonna look at a few of the others. So here is, I believe it's called a lobster claw halconia, heliconia. Isn't that beautiful? It's hard to believe that there's flowers actually looking like that. I believe that's one that we have in one of our kits for you to paint. 
Let's look at another one. That's our pineapple again. See that little tiny pineapple in the middle? It's hard to believe that it's going to be a big juicy pineapple for us to eat later on. All right, let's go on and we'll catch up with some of those paintings later. Let's look at the kit that you're going to have here this week and I'll show you another painting. So here's our paint. Everybody will get whatever they need for the flower that is in their bag. This one is the Lobster Claw Heliconia. So whoever chooses this one, this is what you're going to paint. Now, we don't have to paint the background, but I do want you to paint this flower. You can paint whatever you want in the background. Maybe you want a blue sky in the background, or maybe you want just a green background of leaves. Everybody gets a tiny little canvas. Now Georgia really liked big flowers, but we had all these little canvases that we needed to use. So you're going to do a big flower on a little canvas. Everybody gets a brush, and these are brushes from the library. So when you're done with it, do bring it back so we can use it again in another kit or in another class later on. Couple instructions for you here. This paint is acrylic paint and it will ruin your clothes. So probably you should have a paint shirt on and have something on your table to cover so that you don't get the acrylic paint on your table either or on your shirt. And then I'll show you how to wash the brushes when we're done. And last but not least, this is kind of a little magnifier kind of a thing. Some of George's paintings, you only see just the middle of the flower, or maybe you see the edge of the flower. So if you prefer to do that, if you just want to do part of the flower, maybe like this, this is your viewer. So whatever is inside of this is what you're going to paint. So you move it around, see what you think. Maybe you want to paint something like that instead of the whole flower. That's what this is for, all right? Okay, so let's get started here. All right, I chose um, a painting that is actually here in Muscatine that she did while she was in Hawaii. And this is called the White Lotus, and it is at the Muscatine Art Center. It was given to the Art Center by C. Maxwell Stanley and his wife Elizabeth Stanley. Um, actually, it was given in Elizabeth's honor. They were great people, helped the Art Center a lot. They did lots of um, things like building the, the Stanley Gallery in the back. They built the linkage that was from the gallery and to the house where Laura was and lots of other things to help us to get great artwork and so her family gifted that painting in her honor to the Art Center and that is one of the flowers that Georgia O'Keeffe did in Hawaii. So that is the one that I'm going to do today. I love this one and here's a picture of it and you see it on your screen. So I'm going to look at just a piece of this and you'll be able to see what I'm gonna paint right here. So I'm only gonna paint what's inside of this little viewer. I have my canvas and my paintbrush. You're gonna need a pencil or a watercolor pencil if you have it. Watercolor pencil is pretty handy to have if you like to paint because you can draw with it and once you hit it with water, the lines go away because it's actually like watercolor paint. So these are my colors, green, black, yellow, and white. And we also need some water. So that's what this is here. All right. 
So to help us out, I got ahead of myself a little bit. I wanted you to see um, the drawing. So I'm gonna go over it with a pencil. I did it in watercolor pencil. And this is a sketch. So we're just roughly drawing these lines on here. And I'm looking at my paper here, or my picture, to see what it looks like and if I can do it a bit like that flower. I probably wouldn't go over it with a pencil, but I want you to be able to see it too, so that's why I'm going over it. Okay, can you see the lines here? This line here is here. This line here is here. There's our little gray V up here. All right, I'm gonna do this little piece next. And then the center of the flower, so we have a couple little things. Okay. We'll put all of this definition in at the end. So there's our sketch. And Georgia would have sketched on paper first, but we don't need to do that. We don't have a lot of time today. So we're gonna just sketch right on our canvas. That's what this is called, a canvas. So when you're done with it and you let it dry, you can hang it on your wall. You'll have a piece of artwork on your wall. So we're gonna open our paints. Another thing I want to tell you, the edges of your painting here, um, probably you won't have it framed. So let's make our painting go over the edge too. So we're going to extend those colors and those, those paintings over the edge a little bit. Okay, now we're ready. Now I have a little plastic cover that I'm gonna to use to mix colors. As you can see, I need gray. Do I have gray here anywhere? How are we gonna get gray, do you think? We're gonna take white and a very little bit of black. If we use too much black, it's gonna be black or very dark. So let's take a little bit of our paint And we'll mix up. We rinse our brush between colors, then you won't have muddy colors. And make sure after you rinse your brush off that you have a dry brush because if it's watery, you're going to water down your paints. So I'm just going to use a very little bit of black. And we'll see if we can come up with that really beautiful soft gray. This is one of the most fun things to do with painting is mixing colors. I love mixing colors. So what do you think? Are we close there? Pretty close. All right, let's start painting. We may end up having to paint this a second time because I used a pencil and drew kind of dark lines on here. Use the edge of your paintbrush when you lay it down to do that really nice edge. See how great that gives you a really sharp edge there? And that's what we want. I'm gonna go down on the bottom here, on the sides of my canvas because I want it to look kind of uniform. And if you have your canvas on a piece of paper towel or a newspaper, you can just move that around. You won't have to pick up your painting at all. So I'll 
show you when I'm done here what it's going to look like. Usually you paint from the back of your painting to the front. So what's farthest away goes first and then what's closest to you goes last. So we're working backwards a little bit. I'm almost done. And I'm doing this really quick, so I want you guys to take your time and create something really beautiful. And I'd love to see what you've created after you're done. So please do bring it in if you can, once it's all dry. Here's our little tiny piece of gray triangle up here. I think I'm going to go down below on the side as well. And I'm probably, after this dries, I'm going to hit it one more time, I'm going to go over it with that paint again just to make sure that it has a rich color. All right, so there's our gray. Okay. What's our next color here? Looks like we have white, a little bit of orange, and actually a little bit of gray. Can you see that gray is kind of a shadow on the edge of that flower? So let's take our white again and bring it over here. And then we'll take a little bit of yellow. And this is called shading. When we use more than one color. It's going to be very pale. There you go. All right, so we're going to come over here. And this is a little bright. This is not really the right yellow, so we're going to have to do more shading than I thought. But we'll get the first coat on. We'll lay in that first coat. I made this a little bigger than I should have. if any of you have done this before. If you've painted with acrylic paint before, you can buy them at Walmart. They're called apple barrel paints. These actually aren't apple barrel, but they're the same kind of paint. There's all different brands of acrylic paint. All right. Let's extend that up here. And then we're going to grab some gray because it looks like there's some gray in there as well. And I'm sorry if we don't have all of the colors. I know that I tried to give you maybe four colors to be able to do your paintings with. And if it's not enough, you can always come back and get some other colors if you need to. Okay, can you see how that's kind of shaded in there now? A little more than it, it was just yellow. Now it's a little. All right. And we want to have a nice line too. So we're going to take that gray and go right along the edge of that. And give it a nice line of definition. How about that? Looks pretty good, but I think we need more white than we do yellow. So let's just grab some of that white and go back over the top. Soften that up a little bit. We're getting there. Looks pretty good. Let's go to the next little line here, right by that triangle. We're going to add the white first. And 
you can see the there's kind of an orange here that is the watercolor pencil so it's kind of melting in with the paint which is what we want how about that I'm certainly a long way from Georgia Georgia O'Keeffe but I think she'd be okay with what we're doing today we kind of need a brown or something Hers is a little more brown, and I don't have brown with me anyway. Do you know how to make the color brown? If you mix all the colors together, you'll get brown in some shade or another. All right, let's go on to the next little piece here. We're going to go yellow, and then we'll go back over. This is a little bright too. This yellow looks more like the center, so we're gonna have to soften it up too with some white and some gray. Again, make sure your paintbrush is nice and clean, unless you wanna use it and have the last color in it. That's okay too. And when you dry your paintbrush off, don't dry it like this because you'll ruin it. You can kind of see this one's a little bit messed up already. We want to keep the tip on that paintbrush and so what we do is we just back and forth or you can lightly press on it to get it clean. Okay, All right. we're going to add some white because again it's not really very bright yellow. So we need to soften it up. I'm excited to see what you all are doing with your painting. There's lots of different colors in those bags. There's pinks and greens and blues and yellows. So lots and lots of different beautiful colors to create those Hawaiian flowers with. And I do think we need a little bit of brown because this is not really the right, the right yellow but we'll use gray instead. Now it doesn't look exactly like Georgia, but it's coming along, don't you think? Pretty similar. Georgia had a lot more practice than Julie, so. white again and I'm going to leave that color on my brush. I'll lighten that up. I think we're going to have to go back and make that a little lighter. All right. We'll start on the middle. And then I think I'll continue and I'll surprise you when you come in and get your packet of stuff. I'll try and have this done so you can see what it looks like. It'll be kind of a surprise. So here comes our really bright yellow for the center of that white lotus flower. And that's just going to set off all of the other colors. I'm pretty sure it took Georgia a lot longer than a few minutes for like we're doing. She probably took hours and hours to create her beautiful work. And again, I'm painting the edge because we want our painting to, to look finished on the edge. <clears throat> I need to go back and paint over here real quick. See, we're kind of using a really soft touch. All right, so there 
there's that. All right, let's use a little bit of the green. And we'll do some, probably not time to do that right now, but we're gonna do it anyway. And you know what else I see? Can you see this here? This might be brown or maybe a tad bit of red and I don't have red so I'm gonna have to add that later. But let's do a little bitty bit of the green. Now I barely touched my brush to it but I'm also gonna kind of wipe it off in here because I don't want a lot of green, I just want a little bit of green. And it looks like my brush is not a good point so I'm not sure how this is gonna work. do is rinse your brush and then go back with just a clean brush and do a little bit more. Not too bad. And I don't use very much paint either, do I? You just need a little bit. So I probably gave you way more paint than you're gonna need, but that's okay, because you may be able to paint something else then later on, maybe. A little bit more yellow. Well, I think we're going to call it quits. I'm not going to finish this as fast. And I think I'm going to surprise you anyway when you come in to get your artwork, your packages. So tell mom and dad you want to come in, get a packet of paint, and then please paint on the table. Cover your table before you start painting. All right, make sure that you have water. Make sure you take care of this brush. This is your tool, right? If you wreck your tool, you can't do beautiful artwork. So take care of that tool. When you're all done painting, make sure that you wash your brush off with a little bit of soap and water. I think I wrote that on your note. And when you wash your brush, you can do it this way. Can you see how I'm kind of just a little soap in my hand, brush it back and forth like this. Then you can run it under the water back and forth again, and that way you'll keep that nice point on the brush, okay? Make sure you dry it off, and there you go. Let's hold it up and see what you think. So far, so good. All right, I'm excited to see what happens. Thanks for coming. And remember, this is our last homeschool event until September. So do come in and pick up your paints and your flowers. And then maybe if you do this, you can bring your painting back and we can put it on display in the children's department. All right? And celebrate Georgia O'Keeffe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.